No, give it gas. No, give it gas. Put your foot on the gas pedal. Miss okay. Lap, why are you taking your driver's test on a car that has a stick shift? I'm sorry, it's my girlfriend's car. <laughs> she ain't no friend. Okay, now, now turn up here. You can't go this way! Oh, oh! I have right of way! Ain't so? Not ain't so when you're going the wrong way down a one-way street! Come on, man, what are you doing? Come on, move your car! Katie, order's up. Easy change. Two cheeseburgers? Thank you, dear. I hope everything tasted wonderful, Goot. That was amazing, Goot. I know, right? Oh, wow. I think I left my wallet in the car. Is it okay if I just run out and grab it real quick? No, that's no problem. Okay, good. I'll be right back. Hello, is this the Laura Bennett residence? Is this Laura Bennett? I'm Katie Lapp. You don't know any Katie Lapps. I'm very sorry to bother you. The owner says you letting that jerk walk off without paying is coming out of your paycheck. Did you tell him the young man said he'd be right back, that he just left his wallet in the car? It's called the Dine and Dash. You're too trusting, Katie. Alexis, where I come from, people keep their word. What have I been telling you ever since you started working here? You can't be gullible. You're not in Hickory Farms anymore. Hollow. Hickory Hollow. Whatever. Look. Maybe in Amish land, people are good to their word. But everywhere else, Englishers are liars and thieves. And the sooner you accept that, the better off you'll be. Any luck? Not yet. How many Lyra Bennett's in New York can there be? A lot. Danke. Break's over in five minutes, okay? Where are you, Laura? I need to find you.
While you delayed surgery for the tumor on your spine, the cancer was quietly spreading elsewhere. I've had three top oncologists consulting with me on this. The tumors are both supratentorial and glioblastoma multiform. So it's not over? I'm afraid it's much worse. That doesn't make any sense. She's been fine since the surgery. Yes, but unfortunately, these cancers can turn at a moment's notice. Well, other than all of a sudden, I have to order these silly things to read a menu. At least one of the tumors has worked its way to the optic nerve. So, how long do I have? It's a very aggressive cancer, Laura. Weeks. Maybe months. It's hard to say. Wait, 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 wait. What, that's it? Other than my eyes failing, what else can I expect to happen to me? Probably your balance first. Then muscle weakness. Then your memory and speech will go. Everything will escalate rapidly at the end. Okie dokie. Well, as much as I would like to stay and talk about tumors, I've got to get back to living. Thank you. Laura, what are you doing? I'm not leaving, not today. Laura, stop it! Let go. No! Stop it! I need you to get your life together. I know what you need me to do, but I need to be here with you. We need to fight this together, beat this together. Did you hear, Dr. Stein? My problem is terminal, yours is not. Look, I know you want me to get help, and, and I promised I would, but not today, please, Laura. No, no more delays. Besides, I need some time alone to think, to make decisions. Fresh pot, brewed especially for you. Hey. You want anything? Uh, thank you. No, I won't be long. Well, if you need me, just whistle. Or, I'll be back. I'm real good with accents. You don't have it, do you? There's a lot going on right now. Well, we want our money. I just need a little more time to raise the capital, that's all. Capital? You played the ponies and lost, Bennett. It's a gambling debt, not some investment. Your wife. She's old money, right? Get it from her. I can't. I promised her I was done with this. Ah, come on. You know, you shake her for the money and then, I don't know, go get counseling or something. That's where I'm supposed to be right now, at the best Manhattan therapist money can buy. 50K. End of the month. And, uh, what if I can't get it? It's not the 60s, Dylan. 
We don't need cat people anymore. We have lawyers now. Yeah. But I can guarantee you this. We will tap your wife for the money. One way or another. It's good talk. You want a refill? No, oh, thank you. Uh, gin and tonic, please. Double. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, right? <laughs> Let me guess, Alison. A chronically underemployed actor waiting to make it big on Broadway, right? How did you know that? Honey, come on. I'm in a sports bar in the middle of Manhattan with a waitress making cheesy movie lines to the customers. I mean, how predictable can you be? You think you know my life? <laughs> Juggling three jobs so I can pursue my dream? Um... Uh, listen... Um, it's, it's okay. I, uh, Alison, that's your name, right? Um, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to offend you, okay? Could have won a Tony with that performance, eh? I'll be right back with your drink, love. What about the Amish marmalade? We ran out. She's not going to like that. She loves her Amish marmalade. You don't need to lecture me, Fulton Taylor. I know what she likes better than you do. I'd have to agree with that. Would you like me to bring the car around for you, ma'am? No, thank you, Theodore. My appointment will be here any minute. I'll serve your breakfast in the parlor, then. Just tea this morning, Fulton. I'm not very hungry. Besides, there's no Amish marmalade. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Mayfield. Rosie. No. It's okay. It's okay. Forgive me. I know that. I've been praying for God to heal you. He will. On this side or the other. Speaking of this side, Fulton, I hope we haven't lost any momentum in the preparations for my annual foundation dinner. Uh, Ma'am, uh, we assumed you might want to postpone, considering... No, not at all. Selig, you have two weeks to outdo yourself with this menu. Spare no expense. Yes, ma'am. I want this event to be bigger and better than ever. This is my chance to outlive myself. I'll do my best. So, that's my decision. Of course we'll make the changes, Laura. But I prefer to think that you're going to be with us for a long time yet. I appreciate that, Harold. But I can't leave this to wishful thinking. Everything goes to the Foundation. I understand. <sighs> Mrs. Bennett, I'm, I'm a little confused. What about your husband? Justin, you've done such a wonderful job running the Foundation. Which is why you're here. And I don't want to hide anything from you. I'm grateful for the trust you placed in me. Mr. Yates, over the past several months, I've learned that not only has he liquidated all his stocks, cashed in his personal retirement plan, but borrowed against my estate. I do love my husband. But I am not going to lose the estate my grandparents worked so hard for, along with my foundation, to a horse track or a casino. I will, however, leave Dylan a modest monthly allowance for a year. It's tough love. The only kind of love I'm told that will end his addiction. All right. We're clear, then, that Dylan will no longer be heir to the estate. But what about your biological daughter? Don't you want to reconsider her? No. As hard as it was trying to find her, never being able to meet her, I realized it was wrong of me to interfere with her life. 
And that's how it has to stay. I'm good for it. What are the lines? Not happening, Bennett. Your credit's no good. <laughs> Never mind. Yates? Why are you calling me? I just left a meeting with your wife. Because of your little gambling problem, she's... She's cutting you out of the will. She's leaving everything to the foundation. You, you still there? Yeah, yes, I'm here. Thank you for not letting me get blindsided by this. Um, if I can figure it out, I'll make it up to you. I'm counting on it. Okay. Another spoonful of sugar. You all right, sir? <laughs> you don't want to know my problems. Try me. residence. Hello, I'm sorry to bother you, but I was wondering if this is the Laura Bennett residence? Yes, it is. Can I ask who is calling? My name is Katie Lapp. Wait, can you say that again? Yeah, it's Catherine, Laura Mayfield's daughter. Oh, my. Who is that? Please hold. She says she's Mrs. Bennett's daughter. What should I say? It can't be. I'll take it. This is Mr. Bennett. Uh, yes, sir. This is Katie Lapp, sir. I was hoping to speak with Mrs. Bennett. I'll just go on there. No, stay right there, Camilla. Sorry, um... Yes, I'm sorry, that won't be possible. But I've come all the way from Lancaster County to meet her. When she was in Pennsylvania recently looking for me, we, we missed each other. Well, it's too late. I see. I can phone back later. Tomorrow, if that would be better. No, young lady, you're not hearing me. You must have known she was sick. It's too late. Wait. You mean she's... You should have met her when you had the chance. I'm sorry you came all this way, but uh, there's nothing here for you now. Sorry. Goodbye. I'll just get back to my work now, Mr. Bennett. No, um, Camilla, uh, have a seat. Can you be a sweetie and help me get this stain out with one of your Amish concoctions? Katie? What's, what is it? My mama told me Mrs. Bennett was powerful sick, but I didn't know it would happen this quickly. Wait, she passed away? Are you serious? Katie, I am so sorry. I, I need to let my mom and dad know. Write the letter. Do you remember me telling you about the Amish boy I loved? Daniel Fisher? The one who drowned? How could I forget that? One night, before I came here, 
I was feeling so lost and lonely. I went for a ride in my buggy and I know you'll think I'm strange, but I imagine him sitting next to me. I found myself talking to him like he was there. And he talked to me. And it all seemed so real. And after, somehow I knew what I needed to do. Come to New York. Find your birth mother. Yeah. But now all that means nothing. Wake up, sleepyhead. At work yesterday, I couldn't stop thinking about your bio mom passing away. While you were sleeping, I got the last number you dialed from my phone and found the city in New York by the area code. Then I searched for any Laura Bennett's, uh, even by her maiden name, Laura Mayfield, in the area. I found her, Katie. She's a socialite from a town called Canandaigua. What's a socialite? Rich, influential, powerful. And if that's so, with money like that, her death would have been all over the news. And there wasn't one mention of it anywhere on the web. Someone's been lying to you, Katie. Lying? Remember what I told you about Englishers? Then I still need to go and find her. But how? I only have a phone number. And something called Google Earth. I need you to tackle the chandeliers on the main floor. I want them shimmering for Mrs. Bennett's big event. Excuse me. Last time I checked, I was the head butler. Not assistant to the chief maid. Mm -hmm. Don't you remember the rule? Oh, right. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> Thank you. Besides, if you don't like the workload, talk to Mr. Bennett. He's the one who fired Camilla for no good reason. Well, at least he's been away for a week, so he couldn't fire anybody else. The chandeliers, please. Oh, yes, ma'am. Is Mrs. Bennett expecting any guests? Or maybe it's Camilla's replacement from the agency. Or maybe it's a miracle. <sighs> Mrs. Bennett, you have a visitor. Oh, uh, no, please, no, I'm not even dressed for the day. This is a visitor who can't wait. Miss Katie Lapp. Is this where you've been all week? I wasn't exactly working my program like I told you. But uh, I thought this was one excuse you'd be all right with. <gasps> he came to Lancaster County and found me, Mama. 
and brought me here. Dylan. You deserve this, sweetheart. Anyway, everyone, let's let these ladies alone. They have a lifetime of catching up to do. Mom, I, I think. I'm sorry. You first. There's something I want to show you. <laughs> this is what you were wearing when I put you in Rebecca's arms. Do you know that she gave this to me after I left Hickory Hollow? Yeah. You know a day hasn't gone by that I didn't think of you. I believe you, Mama. Mama. You don't know how I've dreamed of hearing you call me that. There's something else I want to show you. All these years I've collected news clippings from all over Lancaster County. I would pour it through them, hoping that there would be a photo of a little orange girl. And I would fantasize that photo in my puppy. But if she decides she doesn't want to return? We have been her parents for 20 years. She knows who we are and what we believe. She knows we love her. Dear Mam and Dad, I hope and pray all is well with you and Benjamin and his family. I have found out where Laura Mayfield Bennett lives. There may be a chance that I am too late and she has passed away, but I must go and find out for sure and for certain. I also worry that I may not be getting the whole truth. I must confess the English and their ways confuse me sometimes, but I will write you again soon. Please always know that though she is my birth mother, you will always be my true parents. I miss you all so very much. Your daughter, Katie. Yes? Hello, I'm here to see Mrs. Bennett. I'm Catherine. Finally. Where have you been? I'm not sure I... How did you know I was coming? Did Alexis call ahead to tell you? Must have been. Rosie took the call and said the agency was sending you over. Agency. Anyway, we're in a doozy of a rush, so we need to get you plugged in right away. Everyone, what about meet you? Catherine. It's in the fridge, dear. Catherine, taste a bit of bread. This is Rosie. She'll point you in all the right directions. Selig's back there. Now stay away from him right now. He thinks he's it's Chef Ramsay. We'll have time for all the usual pleasantries later, Catherine. We just need to make it through the evening. Mrs. Bennett, she's getting ready for the biggest night of the year. So she's okay then? She is now. Her daughter's home. When do you think I'll get to meet her? Oh, what very soon. Gorgeous. But right now we're behind schedule and we could really use your help. Can you polish silver? I'd be happy to. The plates. Here. Fulton, can you bring more? Oh, yes, yes. Right there. Right there. Butter, guys. I think more butter over here. Yes, sir. Attention, please. Just for a minute, thank you. Zedek, come quick. 
Catherine, you don't want to miss the big introduction. It's because of your generous gifts. There's also something else I would like to share with you this evening. As few of you may know, over 20 years ago, I gave up a child, a baby girl, to adoption. I was a lovesick teenager in trouble, just like some of the young people we help with the foundation. I was ill-equipped emotionally and financially, if you can imagine that, to care for her. So I gave her to a wonderful Amish couple. And they have loved her, and they have cared for her these past years, and for that, I am forever grateful. So, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you tonight to my long-lost daughter. English by birth, Amish by adoption, Katie Lapp. Something to drink? I'm sorry, I, I saw you standing alone over here and I, I thought I'd offer you a drink. Uh, no. Just... Thank you. I'm Justin. I'm... Come, Catherine. I need you back in the kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, yes. I'm the help. Beyond helping with the meal services, you'll be responsible for laundering the linen and the bed sheets on a daily basis, along with maintaining all of the bathrooms. With Mrs. Bennett's condition, we need to keep all the surfaces spick and span. Here's your room. I know it's small, but it's cosy. The list of house rules is there in the desk drawer. I hope you're an early riser. Yes, ma'am. Up with the cows. Are you sure you're okay, dear? I I'm fine. I was just surprised tonight by everything. Weren't we all? Mrs. Bennett's daughter, Katie Lapp? How was she found? I don't have all the details. It was Mr. Bennett's doing. But however it happened, she couldn't have come at a better time for Mrs. Bennett. How sick is Mrs. Bennett? Very. She needs a miracle to beat her cancer. We're all praying Katie's homecoming is that miracle. Well, good night, Catherine. Rosie, just one more question. Yes? Won't I need a uniform? <laughs> oh, yes. It'll be ordered first thing in the morning. Dylan, I can't get over how perfect this evening was. May I have this dance, Mrs. Bennett? Mm. <laughs> I haven't seen you like this since that weekend at the Adirondacks. Remember, we were the only couple there in that lodge? And I had a band playing just for us. I just feel... It doesn't matter what happens to me now. 
Oh, darling, I've been thinking about something. I know that you've designated a portion of your estate to your foundation and a large portion to me, but... Dylan, there's something I need to say. Let me finish, find. darling. I, I still am trying to come to grips with who I'm supposed to be. And how I've hurt you over the years. I realise I still have a long way to go. But I need to start by admitting to you that I... I don't trust myself. And, um... Uh, I want you to consider giving to Katie what you were going to give to me. I don't know what to say. Say so, yes. I need to prove to you that I'm sorry. I need to prove that I am a changed man. Beyond that, I mean, who better to leave the stewardship of your estate to someone who lives a simple, generous life? You keep surprising me, Mr. Bennett. Just give it some thought. I will. It's a lot to ask of a girl who's lived so modestly. I'd be asking her to give up the only family she's ever known. I don't know that she could do that. Well, maybe start by hosting a luncheon. Get Justin to come over to help her understand the goals of the Foundation. It's a perfect idea, I will. I love you, you know that? I love you too. Children. Yeah. And it's, it's very fulfilling work we do. We make significant contributions to a wide variety of charities, all of which serve the needs of marginalized children. Well, carry on, Justin. Right. Sorry. Um, anyway, we try to make an impact in children's lives with worthwhile programs covering a broad range of needs in education, health, and even the arts. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 9. We Amish also believe in heaven open hands for those in need. You must be Camilla's new replacement. What's your name? Uh, it's Catherine. Catherine, really? <laughs> Have we met before? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, I'll, I'll just, I'll go, I'll get something to. Oh. Justin, I think you made her nervous. <laughs> we call that for hoodled. <laughs> well, I guess that's what I do for hoodled women. <laughs> I'm just gonna quickly dry off. I'll be right back. Mr. Worth, I'm not usually this clumsy. It's okay. You can just call me Ice T. <laughs> you know, Ice T, the rapper, actor, S spill a drink. No. Okay. I have no idea what you're saying. Do you want to get a cup of coffee or something? No. <laughs> no, not not now, not this second. You know. Sometime after work or on your day off? Thank you, but I'm certain that wouldn't... Actually, yes. I'd like that. Saturday's my day off. All right. Great. Now I'm the one who's rehoodled.
Yeah, may I help you? Oh, Mrs. Lepp. It's me, Daniel Fisher. Pardon me? I didn't drown in that river. Samuel. Hello, Mr. Lapp. It is you. Yes, sir. You drowned. No, sir. That was a lie. So that it would be easier on my parents. And, and a way for them to save face with the people. Easier? I held your mother in my own arms as she sobbed. Night after night. We all did. What truth were you hiding? To leave. So I could serve in the military. But you know it's forbidden for the Amish to fight? Yes, ma'am. Then why would you? A few years ago, an Englisher cornered me. He said that we Amish turn our noses up at the sacrifices of others, and that we were weak because we don't believe in picking up the sword. He said he had a son who died in the war so that we Amish could have our freedom. Boy, it takes just as much courage to turn the other cheek to an enemy as it does going into war. I know that. But I also know that I had a calling to serve my country. The country that we call our home, too. And after two tours of duty, I reckoned I'd done my part. So, you coming home to repent of your ways? No, ma'am. Why do you come to us? With your permission, to see Katie. After disappearing on her, too? I know. My actions must have hurt her something awful. She pined for years. She was so beside herself with grief, she ran out on her wedding to Bishop Byler. She had to be shunned. Katie? Shunned? She's left at Griallo. Where is she, then? I'll never tell you that. Please, Mr. Lepp. Go on. Leave us now. Unless you come back with a contrite heart, you're not welcome here. Please, Mr. Lepp, you have to let me see her. I just want to tell her that no. I'm sorry. Go on with you. I understand your contempt for me, Mr. Lepp. But what I've been through, Holding on to my memories with her is the only thing that got me home. Even without your help, I have to find her. To tell her that I'm sorry. Has a return address, Vest, Seneca, New York. Please, I need to know where she is and that she's all right. Yes. Okay, I will find her. Promise me. Promise for the time being that you won't enter Katie's life. She's gone through so much already, and seeing you, it could scar her even more. I promise.
What are you doing? Uh, sorry, Give I... Give me that. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to pry. It's just I grew up in Pennsylvania, too. I've always been fascinated with the Amish. It's okay. You can go now. Yeah. For sure and for certain. Dear Mom and Dad, I write with the news that Laura Mayfield is very much alive. But something strange is happening. There is an imposter here posing as me, as Katie Lapp. She dresses in Amish clothing, speaks with our accents, but I can tell she is pretending. Everyone believes she is me, especially Laura. But Laura is so fragile and sick. If I were to come forward with the truth, I'm certain it would cause her much distress. I just don't know what to do. day, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. I don't think we've properly met. Catherine, right? You enjoying working here, being a part of our little family? Very much. Huh. Catherine's the name I gave to Katie when she was born. <laughs> you know there's a whole secret language of flowers. In the Victorian times, people coded messages in flowers and floral arrangements, expressing their feelings for each other, feelings that otherwise had to remain silent. Like blue violets meant faithfulness, almond flowers hope, red roses always mean love. I didn't know that. Be like a flower cat. Be beautiful, rain or shine. Mama. There you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. Do you like it here? Yeah, very much. Because I'm with you. Oh, it's a lot to take in, isn't it? Even after my grandparents passed away and left this entire estate to me, I, I guess I could never see myself as Lady of the Manor. Oh. Do you mind if we sit down? No, I'm a little fatigued. Of course not. Hmm. I guess it's not just my eyesight that's going. Katie, there's something else I want to tell you. I want to leave all of this to you. I don't understand. I mean, when I'm gone, I... I want you to have this entire estate. I want you to run the Mayfield Foundation, to live here, fall in love, raise a family. Is that something you think you would ever want to do? I... I don't want to think about you not being here anymore. Neither do I, sweetheart. And now that I have you back, you have no idea how I wish that we could have every second in the world together. The choices I've made have robbed me of years, and I don't want to miss one second with you. But the decision is yours. Yeah. 
I would have to think about what it would mean to leave Hickory Hollow, to leave my family, mom and dad. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, of course you would. This is a very big thing I'm asking. And I, w I want you to make the best decision for you, not what is best for me. And know that I love you no matter what you decide. Okay. I will think very hard. And pray, right? Oh, yes. And that too. Pardon me. Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you. I had pepper spray. Easy. I, I just want to know if this is where Katie Lepp lives. Who are you? A friend of hers from back home in Hickory Hollow. Yeah, right. You don't look Amish. I was Amish. Not, not looking that way right now. Yeah, the hairdo is off, for starters. What does that mean? It's Pennsylvania Dutch for I am missing the hat and the beard, too. She's gone. And I don't know when she's planning on getting back. Do, do you know where she is? Not happening. <laughs> I'm sure <you're> funny, ain't so? <laughs> So, I was wondering if you thought about what we discussed in the garden? About being heir to the estate? I prayed about it after our walk, Mama. And I have peace in my heart. Yes, I will accept your kindness and hope I can make you proud. Oh, no, you already have. <laughs> well, perhaps we should set a date for the event. Make it official. Well, what better for that than your birthday? Wednesday next week, you'll be 21. Well, I'll call Celia and Yates. Get them to arrange to come by. Good. I'd like to make a toast. To my dear, beautiful daughter, may your life as heir to this family be full. Oh. Are you okay, ma'am? Yes, I'm just clumsy. That's all. Thank you. Are you all right, darling? Thank you.
Pardon me, Miss Katie. I was looking for you and heard someone in here. Yeah, I came to ask the mate if she would be changing my sheets today. Then remembered it was her day off. Ah, I'll, uh, I'll get Rosie right on that. Uh, meantime, you have a visitor waiting to see you. A visitor? Yes, from Hickory Hollow. Really? Mm-hmm. You know, with Mama not feeling so well, maybe it's not such a good time to Well, actually, uh, Mrs. Bennett's already with him, in the garden room. Uh, she told me to bring him right in, and they're off to a fine start. Yeah, of course. Katie, look who's here. Your cousin, Jakob Glick. Hello. Katie Lepp. Hello. I can tell that I'm no more than a stranger to you, Katie. I probably should have mentioned my family and me moved to the Amish community in Holmes County when Katie and I were just pups. Well, it's good to see you after all this while, Jakob. You too, Katie. You too. So, by the look of you, Jakob, are you on your room, Springer? Yeah, I suppose I am. Mama, do you know about room, Springer? We call that our running around years. It's for young people to see the English world and help them decide if, if they, they want to commit a lifetime to the church. I learned all about it when I was reading about the Amish. And what have you decided, Jakob? Yeah, still working on that, ma'am. I went to visit my family in Lancaster County for advice, and I saw Katie's family while I was there. What about you, Katie Lepp? Your parents told me that you're already baptized, so are you going to return to the community? She's going to stay here, become heir to my estate. Ah, oh, that's wonderful good news. But it's important for me to explain it to my folks, you understand? I don't want them to worry. Oh, for sure and for certain. I suppose it's best, considering you're shunning and all. Shunning? Katie, you didn't tell me that. Well, uh, I don't really... Sell. Is a shame when we lose Ralph for a dude. While when the vehicles to get the lap pushed, then we do as is just as high as will. Yeah. What did you say? I apologize for bringing up such a painful topic. Well, I have an idea. Why don't the two of you get reacquainted with the walk in the garden? Yeah. That's very kind of you, ma'am. I actually have to be on my way. I just wanted to stop by for a quick hello. Well, I'm so grateful you did, cousin. Let me walk you out. Goodbye. Bye. By the way, Jakob, how did you find me? Your mom told me that you were looking for your birth mother, so I just did a little digging of my own and tracked you down. You don't think she'd come looking for me herself, do you? Mm, don't know. If it were my daughter all this way out in the world, I'd want to make sure she was okay. Yeah, okay, goodbye. So, Catherine, tell me about yourself. Well, I love to play my guitar and sing songs that worship God. Hmm. That must sound old-fashioned to a man like you. <laughs> it's very old-fashioned. But that's what I like about you, Catherine. You're not like the girls I normally meet. 
Mr. Worth, I... Justin. Remember? Sorry, Justin. I have something I need to tell you. Something very important. Okay. I've discovered something mm -hmm. that needs bringing forward. I'm sorry. Hold that thought. Is she Yates? Right now? You sure you can't wait? All right, hold on. Catherine, I'm really sorry. I need to take this call. Foundation matter. I'll make it quick, okay? Yeah. Mr. Bennett. I thought we needed to talk privately, Catherine. Or is it Katie Lapp? Why don't we just stop pretending? I thought I recognized your voice the other day. And then last night, when you rushed to Laura's side, it became clear. I'm not the only one who's been pretending, am I? Who's been lying? Who told me Mrs. Bennett had died? I never said she died. I said it was too late, and that remains true. That makes no sense. When Laura came back from Pennsylvania, never having once seen you because your parents just wouldn't allow it, her cancer came back, and I had a decision to make. Never in my wildest imagination did I actually believe there was a chance of you actually turning up here. So I, I hired someone to be Katie. I just wanted Laura's final days on this earth to be happy, joyful. I'm sorry how this turned out, but that's why I tried to discourage you from coming when you called that day. That's not the only reason. Just because I'm Amish doesn't mean I don't know what an heir is. There is nothing untoward about this. It's a mere formality. Laura is handing everything off to her foundation. Having Alison here, that's her name, Alison, makes the legal process simpler. It goes from Laura to the foundation with a simple signature. That is all it is. Katie, I hope you understand how devastating this little mix-up will be if it ever comes out. Laura means the world to me. And I, I can see you care about her too. I do. Well, Laura loves that girl. She believes she's her daughter, and that belief is more important than turning this whole thing upside down. Wouldn't you agree? for coming here. I'll pack my things and leave first thing in the morning. Thank you. Katie, thank you. Mr. Bennett. Oh, uh, Justin. Hello. I popped in for a coffee. Ah. Saw our favorite new employees sitting here and I thought I'd say hello. Well, thanks for giving my seat warm. Oh, yes, of course. And uh, you two have a fabulous brunch. We will. And thank you for the good conversation, Catherine. Huh. Where were we? You had something you wanted to tell me. Uh, I'm very sorry. I'm not feeling very well. Would you mind terribly taking me back to the estate? Yeah, sure.
are you doing? We had a guest today. A distant cousin of Katie Lapps from Hickory Hollow. Yes, I know. Fulton told me on my way through the door. Yes, you can understand why I'm pretty freaked out right now. No, it's a distant cousin. Uh, did he recognize you're not her? I don't know. I don't think so. Then we're probably all right. All we have to do is remain calm and try and make it through the signing on Wednesday. I'm not betting on probably. I can't believe I said yes to this job in the first place. You said yes to this job because you're making more money on this little gig than you do as an actor. No, 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 no. Let me pass. Please. I can't do it anymore. I just, I gotta get out of here. I feel like I can't breathe. <laughs> I don't care about the money. I don't. I don't care about the money anymore. Whether these little tears are real or whether they're an actor's trick, I don't care. What you have to understand is, is that we are committing a felony here. And the only way out of it is through it. Fine. Fine. I'll be back for the signing. Mrs. Bennett. Catherine? I'm sorry, ma'am. I, I didn't mean to disturb you. I knocked, but... It's all right. Are you okay, Mrs. Bennett? It's been a tough 24 hours. Katie left to see her parents. She needed to tell them about her decision. It's all in preparation for her staying here permanently. <sighs> and that's what we need to focus on, isn't it, darling? Right. Are those for me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, <laughs> They are beautiful, thank you. It's I who wanted to say thank you. For what? For allowing me to work here the past few weeks. That sounds like a goodbye. Please tell me that isn't so. Sadly, it is. Well, that's a shame, Catherine. We really do hate to see good people leave our employ. I'm very thankful to have spent this short time here. I loved getting to know you, even just a little bit. Well, goodbye then, ma'am. Catherine. Please stay till Katie's birthday on Wednesday. Oh, well, that's a fabulous idea, Laura. I think uh, Catherine is... It's only is... a few days away, and you've been like part of our family, and I want this to be a celebration for everyone. Please, Catherine, for me. Yes, ma'am. For you. Arrived back safely. 
Wonderful. Thank you, Rosie. I'll be right down. Dylan, we'll need you to be a witness for the signing of Laura's codicil. Are you willing to do that? Yes, absolutely. By signing this codicil, we're acknowledging that Katie Lapp will become the sole heir and executor to Laura's estate. Sign here, Laura. Can you show me where to sign? These glasses aren't much use anymore. Your turn, Katie. Stop it. Well. Laura, what's wrong? Laura? Laura? I wanted so badly to believe that Dylan had returned my daughter to me. I tried to convince myself that my doubts were wrong, but something inside me told me she wasn't who she said she was. And you were here the whole time, never saying a word, worried about me, protecting me. Beautiful. Where should I see my beautiful dog? Can you laugh? Theodore's waiting downstairs with a limo to take you to the airport. And, uh, what's happened to Allison? Mr. Morris Yates will be escorting her back to Manhattan, which, by the way, will be his last official duty for my law firm. Your very generous wife will not be prosecuting either of you. But just so we're clear, instead of booking you into a treatment facility in Florida, she could have called the police. And frankly, that's what I would have done.
I'm such a fool. A worthless fool. She's beautiful. I just wish I could turn back the clock. Be the man that you deserve. I love you, you know. I'll pray for you. Are you okay? Yes. Yes, I am. May I ask, how did you know I was me? Come with me. It was this. I don't understand. This is the letter I sent. To your mom and dad. I know, I was confused at first, too. But how did you come by it? The mailbox. I have my suspicions about a young Amish man who visited last week. Amish man? He said he was your cousin, Jakob Glick. But I don't have a cousin, Jakob Glick. Or even a cousin, Jakob. But it's this letter that made me realize who you were. When you came to say goodbye the other day, I wanted so badly to tell you, but I had to remain silent until now. This is my last chance to force Dylan to get him the help he needs. Okay, enough of this doom and gloom. Come with me. Choose anything you like. Anything? Anything. Rosie? Yes, ma'am. Prepare a soiree to end all soirees. And tell Selig to outdo himself. The birthday girl's getting ready. Yes, ma'am. Be thou my vision, O oh Lord of my heart. Not be
Yeah? Let's see it. No? Yeah! Yeah, all right. Congratulations. <laughs> Too bad. Congratulations, Miss Katie. <laughs> oh, your mum would have been so proud. You think so? I know so. Uh, I'm just hoping that the newly licensed lady of the manor will still let me do the driving. I would hate to have to go looking for another job. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, Theodore. In fact, how about you drive us into town for that lunch I still owe Justin? Really? I'd love to. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Just one more time, Mr. Kowalski. I promise you, this is it. It hasn't changed since yesterday, or the day before, or five weeks ago when you first came in. Consider it officially on layaway. This girl, she must be special. I could buy everything in here and it still wouldn't come close to expressing how special she is. I'll be back soon with the other half. Like I told you, I can't see She's her without... She's here without the necklace, I know, yes. Come back soon, quick. Thank you, Mr. Kowalski, thank you. Where to now? Where to now? Um, have you been bowling? No? No, but I've always wanted to try. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to the bowling lanes, Theodore. You got it. Thank you. Daniel? Katie, who'd you just see? It was someone who it couldn't have been. Katie Lapp, you are the most beautiful creature God has ever made. And someday, I'm going to marry you. 